We're now ready to go on to lesson four. Now, before I do that, let me tell you what we've done up to now, because some of you may not have seen the earlier shows. Uh, first of all, we did TMB, top, middle, bottom. Then we did LCR and ramifications. Then we learned how to watch for one cell left in a row, column, or block. And then we learned how to watch for two empty cells in a row, column, or block. But today is a very important lesson because we cover all that as well. And at the beginning of this lesson, I've got some really good hints. So let's watch. Before I start this particular puzzle, I want to give you a couple of more hints. The first one is a very important one. And it's called never, ever, never, ever, never, ever, never, ever guess. Because now, usually it doesn't work out. And if it does work out, you're very lucky. You should bear in mind this, that you only put a number in a cell when you know for sure that is the only number that can go there based on logic. Now, my second hint is this. Several years ago, I had a lady come to me with a puzzle in one of my classes, and she it looked like this. And she had done this on every block in the whole puzzle. All these little numbers, boy, that's a lot of work and it's tedious and it makes it really messy, particularly if your grid of your puzzle is small. But what she was doing is this, she'd say, well, she'd go from one to nine and then she'd take this little cell here and then she'd say, okay, is there a one along here in the row? Or is there a one down here in the column? Is there a one in the block? No, there isn't. So a one could go there. Then she'd go with two. She said, is there a two along the row? Is there a two down here? No, there's no two in the block. So she put a two in. And she went all the way through from one to nine. And it finished up like this. I don't recommend that. You don't really need to have that mess. So what I suggest that you do is that you really aim to only have two small numbers in a cell at one time. Now there's going to be some times down the road when we go into more harder puzzles where there will be three small numbers in a cell, but I'll tell you that when the time is appropriate. So let's get on with the puzzle. I'll be back in a second to show you our new puzzle. Hi, here we are back again. And this time I've got a puzzle for you and we're going to learn how to cut down the little numbers and do things faster. So here we go. Let's take the horizontal uh, blocks. We're using top, middle and bottom first. So we have here, we have a one in this block. We have a one in this block. We have a top level. We have a bottom. So the one has to go over in these two cells. Now, we used to go, initially, we put a little one there and a little one there. But we don't need to do that, really, if we used our brain and remember. Bearing in mind that's a one or a one, we look down the column, and lo and behold, there's a one there, which cancels out the one in this cell. Therefore, this one has to be a one. Let's take twos. Are there any twos here? Hmm. Don't see any twos. Threes. There's a three in the top row here. Uh, there's a three in the middle row here. So in this block, the three has to be in the bottom row. And here it is there. Fours. Here we have a bottom. Here we have a middle. In this block, we don't have the fours. It has to be in the top. So I say to myself, there's a four, four possibility there. But there's a four down here. So that cancels out that four. So this becomes the real four. Let's go on now for five. Well, we have two fives. We have a five in the middle here and a five in the bottom here. The so fives have to go in the top in this, in, in this block where there's no fives. And in this case, I'm looking down, there's no five. And so therefore, I have to put in five in both cases. That's where you do put in two small numbers. Sixes. Well, we've got all the sixes already. Top, middle, bottom. Sevens. Well, we have two sevens, a bottom and a top, so the seven has to go in here, and it has to go here or here in those two cells. But which one? 
we find out by looking down. Look down here, there's a seven. So therefore the seven cancels out a seven there, so this becomes your seven. Eights. Hmm. Don't see any eights. Nines. Don't see any nines. There's only one. Okay, let's go down to these three blocks. <laughs> let's do the ones. A bottom, a middle, has to be up in here. One of these is going to be a one. But keep that in your head. You look up, there's a one there that cancels that cell out. You look over here, there's a one here that cancels that cell out. So you have to have a one there. That's the only place it can go. Let's go to twos. We have two twos, a middle and a top over here. It's going to be in the bottom and it can go into both cells. We look up and down. No, so we put in a little two there, like so. Three is exactly the same. We have a three, middle, three in the top, and the three, therefore the three has to go here. We look up and down in these th two columns. There's no three, so we do. Now have we got a matching pair. Just a reminder, by the way, a matching pair means that no other number can go in there. You don't need any other little numbers at all. Now, we were doing three. We go to four. Uh, there's only one four. Five. There's only one five. Here. Sixes. There's no sixes at all. Sevens. There's only one seven. Eight. We have a top. We have a bottom. So therefore an eight has to go in the middle. There it is there. Nines. Well, we have a nine in the middle here in this block. We have a nine in the bottom of this block. Therefore, in this block, it has to go in the top. So it goes there. Let's now go to these three bl um, blocks, horizontal blocks. Uh, ones. Well, once again, what we did over here, the same thing applies. If we look at this one at the bottom and this one at the top, the ones have to be in here, in the middle. So we look up. Here's a one that cancels out that cell. Here's a one that cancels out that cell. That's the only cell a one can go in. Okay, let's go to twos. There's only one two. Let's go to threes. There's no threes. Let's go to fours. All the fours are all there. Bottom, top, middle. Fives. We have two fives. And the two fives, this is a bottom and a top, so the two fives have to go in here. So we look up to see if there's a five. Yes, there's a five there, so that cancels out this cell. So this is where the five has to go. Follow that now? And let's go on. Sixes. There's two sixes. There's a middle and there's a bottom. So this becomes a six. Why? Because when I look up there and I look up there, there's no six. Sevens. Well, there's only one seven. I think, yeah. Eights. In these three blocks, I don't see any eights. Nines. Well, we have two nines. We have a nine in the middle here and a nine in the top here. Therefore, the nine has to be in the bottom here and there's only one place for it to go. That's where we put it. I'll follow that. Now, let's go to the vertical blocks using left, center, and right. With the ones, we have a left, we have a right, we have a center. They're all done. Great. Twos. Well, uh, no twos. Threes. I don't see any threes other than that one. Fours. There's, an, there's two fours. Oh, there's three fours. There's a right, a center, and a left. Um, fives. There's only one five. Leave it. Sixes. There's two sixes. Uh, this is interesting. There's a middle. There's a center, rather. There's a left. There's a six has to be on the right in this block that doesn't have the sixes, but there's no sixes along here, so we put in a six and a six. Sevens. Uh, I'm just looking at it. It's hard to look at it sideways. Yeah, there's no sevens. Well, there's one seven, sorry, but that's all. Eights. There's only one eight. Nines. There are two nines, one in this block here and one in this block. We have a right, we have a left, so it has to be up here in the center. Now, there's a nine up in there, so it can't go there. It has to go there. Now we come to remember ramifications. When we're doing these, we look for ramifications, and ramifications are so important, it's easy to miss them. Look, here's a nine, there's a nine, middle, top, 
has to be on the bottom over there. It could be there or there, but let's look down. Oh, there's a nine there, so that cancels that nine out, so we go there for our nine. Has that got any other ramifications? No, I don't think so. Let's now go to these three, these three blocks at vertical. Ones. Well, the ones are already there. Twos. There's only one two. Leave it. Threes. There's two threes. There's a three on the right here. There's a three on the left. So in this block, it has to be in the center. And there's only one place for it to go. So that's where we put our three. Fours. Well, we have one in the middle up in this block. We have one on the right, sorry, one in the center of this block, I should say. One on the right down here. So it has to be there or there. But this four cancels out that one, so this will become the four. Now, what's the ramification of that? Well, we have a, uh, a middle, we have a bottom. It has to be on the top, one of those two. Well, look, I look down, there's a four there, so it has to be over there. So, any other ramifications? Let me see. Oh, no, that's looking good. Uh, fives, let's look at fives. Well, we have a five here on the left. We have a five here in the center. The five has to go there. Now, what's the ramification of that five? Well, I've noticed along these three blocks, we have a five at the bottom. We have a five in the middle. So the five has to go up here, here or here. But there's a five down here. That cancels out a five going there. So the five is a full big five. Now, what's the ramification of that? Is there one? Let's have a look. We have a right down here and we have a left. So therefore, this block has to have a five in the center. So this is erased and that becomes a five. And we can get rid of this one now because the five's already there. Well, before we say goodbye to this session, let me tell you something. You probably notice that going along the bottom of the, the, the frame of your TV, you'll see that you can send me any questions you'd like. My, my hotmail or my email, you can put robinjarman42 at hotmail.com. Now, if you want to see the lessons that I have on YouTube, and there's 82 of them, they include lessons and tutorials, uh, all kinds of different suggestions from very easy to very hard techniques. So anyway, just to, let, to know that I'm happy to answer questions. Here's one question, and this one is an interesting one. It's from Christine in London. I'm not sure if it's London, Ontario visiting here or from England. But anyway, thank you, Christine. Her question is, how do the uh, people who design the puzzles come up with category levels? Well, generally speaking, the more the numbers are on the puzzle, the easier it is, but not always. A lot of the, the, the puzzles today are such that you may find that they're, they're more difficult if you don't have enough of these little tricks that I'm showing you. Well, that's it for this session. Bye.